Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can install and use RabbitMQ on your Windows operating system. So first of all, what is RabbitMQ? So RabbitMQ is an open source message broker software that facilitates communication between different components of distributed uh, systems. So for example, if you are designing a system which requires communication between two services or uh, two different uh, applications, you can consider using RabbitMQ for that. So RabbitMQ uses a protocol which is called Advanced Message Queuing Protocol or in short it's called AMQP which I will recommend you to read about that so that uh, you can use RabbitMQ in your system design for your software for example. So now let's start with the installation part. So just open your favorite browser and search for RabbitMQ and the first link which will appear here will be from rabbitmq.com. So we are going to click on this link and this is the home page. On the home page you can uh, click on this get started tab here and you will see the download button here. So I'm going to click on the download button and now we are on the downloads page of RabbitMQ. So when you will scroll down you will be able to see the download section for Windows also. So we are going to click on Windows installer option. Now on this installing on Windows page, when you scroll down, you will see a section called using the installer. And when you scroll a little bit more down, you will see the dependencies of uh, RabbitMQ installation. So the basic dependency of RabbitMQ uh, installation is Erlang. So you need to have Erlang installed on your system because RabbitMQ is based on Erlang language, right? So you need to have Erlang installed and then you can start the installation of uh, RabbitMQ. So here you can see you should have the latest version of Erlang. So let's first install the Erlang and then we will come to uh, this specific uh, page to download this exe file and then install it. So to install Erlang, the procedure is really simple. You just need to go to your favorite browser once again and search for install Erlang. And the first link which will appear here will be from erlang.org forward slash download. So I'm going to click on that. And then you have this option for the Windows installer. So I'm going to click on the Windows installer option here. And it's going to uh, download this Windows 64 bit exe file. You can also see there are two options. One is download 32-bit installer and download 64-bit installer. When you click on this button, by default, the 64-bit installer will be downloaded. But if you want 32-bit installer, you can download it from here. Once this exe file is downloaded, I'm going to click on this exe file and let me minimize the browser. So on this first window, says do you want to allow this app to make changes on your device I will click on yes here and then the installation of Erlang will start on your Windows operating system so on this uh, first window you can choose the components so here it says Microsoft DLLs present I will just uh, check this checkbox and then click on next this will be the location where Erlang will be installed so if you don't have the good reason to change this location, just leave it as default and then click on next and then click on install, which is going to start the process of installation of Erlang. Now Erlang also requires this Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 to 2019 redistributable. So here I will click on I agree and then click on install which is going to install this uh, redistributable file. And once the setup is successful, you will see this message. So I'm going to close this and then the installation will continue. So now I can see uh, this message at last, which says completed. Setup was completed successfully. So now the installation of Erlang is finished. So we are going to just close this window. 
and now when you go to your uh, start button and then click on all apps and then when you will scroll down a little you will be able to see this erlang otp section so just click on that and from here you have this erlang option so i'm going to click on this erlang option which is going to open this kind of terminal where you can uh, test erlang commands so here for example i want to add two numbers i can just uh, write two plus three and then uh, dot here and then press enter and it's going to give me the output right so in this way you can download and install erlang so once you have erlang installed we return to the download page of the RabbitMQ. So here you can see the RabbitMQ server exe file. So I'm going to click on this uh, exe file, which is going to download this RabbitMQ server uh, exe file. Once this exe file is downloaded, we are going to click on this file. And then here, once again, we can see this message, which says, do you want to allow this app to make changes on your device? I will click on yes here. Let me minimize this browser. So you can see the RabbitMQ installer has been started. And at this point, we just need to click on the next button. So on the next window, you will see the default location where uh, RabbitMQ will be installed. So if you don't have the good reason to change this location, just leave it as default and then click on install, which is going to uh, start the installation of uh, RabbitMQ. So once you have uh, Erlang installed, the installation of uh, RabbitMQ will be fairly easy. So just wait for this installation to complete. Now in between the installation, you can see this kind of warning. It says Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some feature of this app. I will click on allow access here. And now I can see the installation of RabbitMQ has been finished. So once it's finished, I can click on the next window and then you can see the last window which says completing the RabbitMQ server setup. And then it says start RabbitMQ service. So just leave this checkbox as checked. What it's going to do is it's going to start the RabbitMQ service in the background so that you can start using RabbitMQ on your Windows operating system. Click on finish here. Now, once you click on finish, let's see how we can uh, install some plugins related to RabbitMQ so that we can manage our RabbitMQ server, right? So first of all, when the installation is finished, you can click on start uh, button here and then click on all apps and then scroll down where you will see the RabbitMQ folder. So I'm going to scroll down and I can see this RabbitMQ server folder. And then you have this RabbitMQ command prompt, right? And also you have this uh, RabbitMQ plugin uh, folder and then RabbitMQ service install, uh, service remove, service start and service stop. So you can start and stop the service uh, from here also. Also, you can even remove the service or reinstall or install the RabbitMQ service from here. So first of all, I'm going to click on this option which says RabbitMQ command prompt, which is going to open the RabbitMQ command prompt here, right? So on the RabbitMQ command prompt, uh, when you want to manage your RabbitMQ server, what you can do is you can use the RabbitMQ plugins command uh, using RabbitMQ plugins command. You can enable some plugins which are available in RabbitMQ, which allows you to manage your RabbitMQ server, for example. For now, let me just uh, go to the properties of this terminal and make the font a little bit bigger so that you can see uh, all the commands here. So here on this RabbitMQ command prompt, so just write rabbitmq plugins dot batch then and then just write list after the space and then press enter and when you give this command you will see the list of all the plugins which are available now we want to install this specific plugin which is called rabbitmq management plugin so let's install this plugin for this you need to give this command which is 
rabbit uh, and q hyphen plugins and then enable and then rabbit mq management right so just write rabbit mq underscore management and then press enter which is going to enable this plugin and you can see uh, this plugin has been configured and it's being enabled this plugin also enables few uh, other plugins for example RabbitMQ management agent and RabbitMQ web dispatch so once the plugins are, uh, are enabled you can once again give the RabbitMQ uh, plugin list command here and then press enter and once again it's going to get, show you the list and this time you can see in front of these uh, RabbitMQ management plugin you can see this E symbol here which means that these plugins are enabled right so these three plugins are enabled and other are not enabled because there is no symbol in front of them so once the RabbitMQ management plugin is uh, enabled we can once again go to our browser and here I can just give uh, this IP address which is 127.0.0.1 colon 15672 this is the default port of uh, RabbitMQ management uh, window on your browser so just write 127.0.0.1 colon 15672 and then press uh, enter and now I can see that this is uh, not opening that means my service is not yet been started so to solve this problem what we need to do is we just need to go to the start button and then go to RabbitMQ in all apps and uh, here under RabbitMQ you just need to stop and start the service right so just click on RabbitMQ service stop which is going to stop your RabbitMQ service and then you just need to start your RabbitMQ service once again so that if any problem occurred while starting your RabbitMQ service your RabbitMQ service previously it can be resolved so the RabbitMQ service has been stopped now so we will do the start now so once again go to RabbitMQ server and then this time I'm going to click on RabbitMQ service start and then click on yes which is going to start this service so you can see it says starting service and window disappears which means RabbitMQ service has been started so once again when you uh, go to this URL which is 127.0.0.1 colon 15672 you will see this kind of web page now here the default uh, username and password for RabbitMQ is guest and guest so just uh, write guest here as the username and guest as the password and then click on login which is going to log you in to the RabbitMQ management console here you can see few tabs using these tabs you will be able to manage your RabbitMQ server on the overview tab you will see the list of uh, all the main components so you can have the overview of queued messages uh, which is currently idle because we are not running anything on our RabbitMQ server you have message rate also number of connections channels exchanges queues and consumers right and if you want to dig deeper into all these things you have all these uh, tabs here so if you want to see the connection list then you can uh, go to this tab if you want to see the channel list you can go to this tab same is for exchange so by default RabbitMQ creates seven default uh, exchanges with the default virtual host which is forward slash on top of that you can add more exchange exchanges here similarly you can create uh, more queues from here or from your application you also have the admin uh, tab here so you can see here you can provide a new user uh, name and password and then also assign the role to that user so you have the admin monitoring policy maker management 
and other roles available here. So once you create a user and assign some role to it, uh, some part of uh, this RabbitMQ management functionality will be restricted, for example, for monitoring user or the management user. Admin have all the access. So this guest is an administrator. And then uh, depending on the user type, you can create different users from here. Also, you can create virtual host from here and you have also other options like feature flags, policy limits and cluster options from here. So this is how you can install and use RabbitMQ on your Windows operating system. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.